Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about Kubernetes certifications. In my previous video I have summarized five key facts that you need to know about Kubernetes in order to understand this technology and software better. The link to my previous video should appear up here or up there. So let's get started with certifications of Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a software that is easy to understand but a bit harder to manage in a sense that it's not difficult as such but you need to know how to do that you need to know a set of commands you need to know the principles of how it works and it's a very important software to know for DevOps engineers or for cloud engineers and sometimes for solutions architects as well or even for for any IT professional that works with the cloud and with continuous integration continuous development it is not only popular, but just a quick look through different job descriptions that I did actually before putting together this video will help you to understand that actually many companies would love you to know more about Kubernetes. They would love you to be able to administer that software, to be able to work on that software. And these job descriptions, they don't have like minimal salary or anything. They are better middle level, I'd say, job descriptions that offer you a fair salary. So, which makes me believe that Kubernetes is an important thing to not only know about, but to be able to use and possibly to get certi certified in. When I started looking for different Kubernetes certifications, not only for this video, but for myself as well, as I'm planning to pass it after passing AWS and Red Hat that I've, I've planned in the future, I saw that there are different companies that offer Kubernetes. But since you know me, I like to talk about official certifications only, and I by no means want to say anything negative about other certifications, but I just like to pass the certification that is provided by the official body that manages this software. So this is a better way to me, for me to get to know the software better and to get to know it deeper. Because obviously the companies that created this software would come up with a better certification. That's at least that I came to believe after passing several IT certifications, tech certifications in my career. For this reason, I already mentioned that Kubernetes is managed by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and in turn Cloud Native Computing Foundation is managed by Google and the Linux Foundation. This has been a lot of, uh, th there has been a lot of bureaucracy and etc because this managed by this, this managed by this, it can be really frustrating. But when you look for a Kubernetes certification on Google, you can come, come across the links provided by both the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and the Linux Foundation. And the thing that I, would want, I want to mention that both of these certifications are the same because Cloud Native Foundation is managed by the Linux Foundation. The link that is on Cloud Native Foundation's website is not as informative as the link on the Linux Foundation's website, but, but as I said, they are advocating and providing the access to the very same certification. After I took a LinkedIn course to learn more about Kubernetes, I realized that it is only a drop in the ocean. So it, it is learned way better based on this in a scenario setting where you have different scenarios and you can basically sort of use that knowledge to to solve different problems in different settings. And this is very important because when you just learn that this command does this, this command does this, if you don't use it, you forget it in a day, mostly because our brain is, is programmed in the way that it is it needs to solve anything, work on scenarios in order to remember and have in mind the information better. So the Linux Foundation provides three certifications related to Kubernetes and they are Certified Kubernetes Administrator, Certified Kubernetes Application Developer and Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist. I believe these certifications in the way that they are presented in the website, this is the right way to pass them unless you are working in a very specific, you already know how to administer Kubernetes, for this reason you wouldn't need to pass Certified Kubernetes Administrator and you would like to pass the security specialist. So you're dealing with in you're working in a cyber security and you need to know how you can secure the software 
or you're, you're a developer who is using this Kubernetes and for this reason obviously certified application developer Kubernetes application developer is a better match for you but otherwise if you're just interested in Kubernetes if you're working with it or if you're an admin of it it's better to pass these certifications in the sequence provided in the website which is certified Kubernetes administrator certified Kub application Kub sorry certified Kubernetes application developer and certified Kubernetes security specialist. All of these certifications cost $395. And as you can see, the more we go towards the performance-based certifications where you have to actually pass the whole certifications certification based on performance questions as opposed to information-based questions, the more expensive they become. So as opposed to certifications that you can pass on Pearson, you can get different discounts, you can buy vouchers for cheaper with, with performance-based exams such as Red Hat Linux or Certified Kubernetes Administrator. It's not as easy and you have to pay more. So this certification is not provided by Pearson, it's provided by the exam simulator by the company killer.sh, killer as killer, K-I-L-L-E-R. And if you buy the exam voucher for $395, you get two exam retake attempts. Which is very important because if you don't pass it the first time, you have the chance to pass it the second time. The exam lasts two hours and there is only one way to take it. It's online, there is no way, no way and no need to go to the classroom to pass this exam. You have, as I said, one retake. Uh, they don't send you a certificate just as CompTIA does, so you just get a PDF certificate and digital badge. And as I said, it's a performance-based exam. You're doing something on the terminal or on the, on the command line through the whole exam and you basically don't need to answer any information based questions such as multiple choice or any other type of questions where you just choose out of choose the answer out of available options because they expect you to know all of this information before you start the exam before you go to a performance based exam and it is in exam simulator. It's the experience level that they provide is they say it is it's intermediate since I have not passed any Linux into Linux Foundation certification before I can't really say what intermediate experience level means for them because you can pass certified Kubernetes administrator exam even if you don't have any Kubernetes experience. I mean, you can start preparing for that exam obviously and learn about Kubernetes with the exam. They provide the exam objectives on the website. The objectives are not as wide as the ones provided by AWS or by CompTIA. They are rather con um, succinct and the same is with Red Hat. The Red Hat certifications objectives are very brief and they're presented in a laconic way. If you buy a voucher for this certification, you get actually a chance to start training for this certification. It's not a training course as such, but they contain a checklist of the things that you need to know how to do to prepare for the exam. But as I said, it is for the same price as the voucher, $395. If you want to get an online course as well, you need to pay $595 which includes course plus exam to prepare for the certification. Since they provide the checklist when you just buy the voucher and they provide you with the different tools in order to prepare for the exam, I think it is possible to pass it without the course to be honest since you have you've got the objectives you've got the checklist provided by the certification body itself and you have access to exam simulator just to practice so you can as well buy a cheaper course somewhere on udemy or linkedin learning to prepare for the exam or obviously if you wish to buy a course why not this course is provided by the certification body itself that's why if you have additional 200 bucks, why not just go for it? But I really like their approach. They have a training portal. So you really feel like you're in the university or something in some sort of managed setting when you prepare for this certification. You know, it's not the same with CompTIA, I'd say, unless you buy additional 
bundles with Compteia in order to have access to some sort of performance based simulator and etc. I never bought that, but it never comes with exam vouchers price with Compteia or AWS, does it? So I think the Linux Foundation might have a bit better approach to preparation for the certification. So I think this is all about the general information about certifications on Kubernetes and I think it is very important certification for you to consider. In order to be a certain of that, just look through the job descriptions of the roles, IT roles you want to be in. If you see that at least 7 out of 10 of them mention Kubernetes, it means that it's important to know it first to get a better pay, pay rise on your current job or to get a better job if you wish to do so. So in any case, it is very important technology to know of in this day and age. And trust me, if you start working with it, if you start delving deeper into this software, you will get the hang of it and you will understand how interesting it is to work with it. I would be very interested to find out what you think about Kubernetes certifications. Do you think it's a waste of money or do you think it's a good investment to pass it? And remember that the best investment in, is investment in yourself. And do you think it's best to go for official Linux Foundation certifications on Kubernetes or it's better to consider something else? I would love to hear what you think. Please leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Thank you for being with me today and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. The more subscriptions I get, the more motivated I feel to pass more certifications, to prepare more, to prepare better content and to share with you my knowledge and expertise. Thank you for being with me today and have a nice day. Bye.